I'm lucky to have two very good musical friends of mine. One of them let me borrow an Aria neck straightening tool, which, you know, it's these clamps. Also this uh, heating part that uh, basically gets clamped on and keeps everything level. And another friend of mine that I'm in a band with has this Fender Mustang. It does have the Phillips head uh, truss rod right here. So I actually have to take the whole neck off in order to relax the truss rod and then put it back on and then put a uh, clamp up everything. But uh, it plays like butter, but the truss rod's bottomed out. So the neck is straight, but there's no ability to adjust the truss rod anymore. So after I had practice on uh, over a half dozen of my own guitars, my friend allowed me to uh, have his vintage Mustang so that I could uh, straighten it out for him. But it, it plays like butter, it stays in tune, and it does the vibrato great. The rest of this is probably going to be me taking the neck off, and then clamping, and then heating it up, and then leaving it alone because that's the way it works. I found in this process I don't really have to take the strings off. I just have to get them to the side of the neck. Usually how I would do this would be at this point I would tape the strings down or make them so that they don't come up to the top of the neck or the bottom of the neck. Um, so they're just on the side. Tape them in place or do something else. And then put all the clamps through in their different positions. and then put the heating element in its place. But since what needs to be done before that is to relax the truss rod so it's loose. Um, if it's tight, this kind of defeats the whole purpose of this. Um, you need to loosen the truss rod so that it's not doing what it needs to do. Uh, it'll do what it needs to do after this comes off. Looks like my friend put a uh, little f uh, 0.5 degree um, shim in here. Now, not sure how well in focus that is, but that is the style of truss rod that is on some old vintage fenders. So I think I'll pause and uh, zoom in on that. So that is kind of the Phillips head style of an older fender uh, truss rod. And it's so annoying that it's on the inside of, or the bottom of the neck, inside the neck pocket. But uh, what I do at this point is loosen the truss rod, so that's lefty loosey, um, to the point where it doesn't feel like there's tension. Now, there, there might be people more knowledgeable than me. I am very much an amateur when it comes to guitar maintenance and uh, what I'm doing here. Um, but I have worked on a lot of guitars, and I have two dozen of my own. And I have worked for a music company where I did do a little bit of QC when they needed. Um, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but not entirely. Someone else probably knows better than I. Unleashing the uh, tension is basically, you know, ready, tidy, let do Lucy. Um, go to the point where you don't feel tension. It might be good to go back and forth if you're not familiar with the truss rod. So I kind of took it out and I'm kind of bringing it back in to see where the tension point is. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of leave it at a midpoint. So, especially when there's not strings on it, it's or there's no string tension, it's hard to tell um, how much tension really is there. This is the side that is used on the frets. Um, sometimes the instructions show a spacer. I don't have any spacers. 
so I'm not aware of that. Um, usually on the next that have really needed this, there'll be some rocking back and forth. Um, I'm not really getting rocking back and forth when I go from the heel to the nut. Um, what I'm really feeling is more the radius of the neck. So, I mean, that's why it plays quite nicely. It's a nice straight neck to begin with. Um, and basically the, this truss rod was uh, completely screwed in all the way. So, um, I didn't completely loosen it, but I did loosen it a lot. So, what that will be able to do is, if it needs to be tightened again, um, it can be. These are the U-shaped clamps. Um, I put a post-it note uh, because on some of my guitars, it did leave um, the mark with the rubber. Like I've got an old white um, Les Paul. Well, it's not old, it's 10 years old. It's not like it's from the 50s or 60s. Um, so I did put a post-it note. It doesn't seem to burn or scorch or anything like that. So that's what I do to try to not leave a mark. Um, and you only go so far to the heel. Um, I like to be right under the first fret. Uh, and then I like to kind of be around the little temperature control on the uh, neck straightener. If I had an acoustic, um, this is what I would use on the part. So this would go into the sound hole, uh, and this would go um, under the neck through the sound hole um, and clamp it there. Um, instead, I'm just using these types of clamps. This is the point where it's on there firmly. I want to get it just right so that I'm happy where every location is, that the contact points are good enough. And I get it somewhat tight to start with, but then I will heat it up and then tighten it after it's all the way on so what I do to start it up will probably be about 15 minutes on 10 and then about 45 minutes on 7 so this is probably the most exciting part where it's just gonna sit here um, and I want to get the clamps fairly tight but not insanely tight So there's no weight on the headstock, so we don't want to get bends or anything like that. We want it um, as straight as possible. So the body's flush against this table. This is a bunch of old, shows how old I am, I have DVDs. Um, so that's counterweighting this right here. And I'll probably come back in about 15 minutes and tighten it one more time. And after it's been heated for about an hour, I'll then leave it alone for a day. It's been about 15 minutes, so I'm going to do the whole 
10 down to 7. Voila. And I'll do about 45 minutes of that. Go from 7 to 0, and that turns it off. Now I leave it alone for a day. Well, I'm back the next day, um, ready to take off the neck straightener. And I'm going to try to adjust the truss rod properly, uh, restring everything, and set it up nicely. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so before when I tried rocking back and forth, oh well, you cannot rock back and forth. So if I have this elevated, <laughs> that's a straight neck, which, you know, that, that, that's the whole point. <sighs> so I'll have to take the neck off to put some um, amount of strain on the truss rod so it is being used uh, before it was bottomed out whereas this let it kind of uh, allow the neck to reset what is it 5, 10, 20 years later how's the neck gonna be my guess is that uh, straight wood will stay straight uh, where slightly curved wood is gonna curve back again so I think this is um, kind of like ironing out clothing um, it's gonna help for a while and it's gonna play awesome and uh, be great uh, then after a certain amount of time it probably would be nice to do this again <clears throat> so it's all right so I think I'll do a close-up of tightening that back up um, I'm not sure that you can tell just how straight that neck is. So this is the kind of truss rod, so I'm always kind of paranoid. I literally do have my cheat sheet that I got years and years ago. Um, but it's just righty tighty lefty loosey man. If you figure that out, you figure out like which way to go for almost everything. Which is, uh, yeah, let's see how this feels, because right now it's pretty darn loose. Uh, I'm trying to use as little pressure as possible. That kind of feels about right. So, let's see if I can really focus that in. Um... Before it was almost flush with the, um, the the heel of the neck, whereas now it might be possibly a millimeter or half a millimeter in. If you are looking, let's see if I can get the focus. Yeah. How straight is it? Of course, the real test is once there's string tension on it, and how straight will that be? And I've found so far, I don't feel that the neck straightener does any, it might do some damage or wear on the frets, but I don't notice it. So that is what I am saying. So my next little part in all this is to uh, put the neck right back on there. I'm just curious about the serial number or anything. It's definitely a nice, nice and tight neck pocket. And I guess I've, like some people wondering, like, well, where did you learn how to do this? Um, a lot is just having really cheap guitars that needed to get repaired. 
and learning on those and then understanding that like if you mess up it's not that big of a deal um, but also in my 20s I got to work as a graphic designer at a music company so at that place um, you know if Guitar Center had a big order or a musician's friend or Sam Ash or whoever um, if they pulled everybody that had knowledge of guitars to help with QC so you know I'd be checking to see if there are any uh, you know the strings would fret out that the electronics would work um, if there were any uh, sharp frets um, and if you know if there were any problems we'd hand it off to the real QC people but we would at least kind of screen things for them when they were exceedingly busy um, but also at that place I, I got to make my uh, my own guitar do a lot of part guitars uh, do some Frankensteins um, also their customer service would get uh, broken returns and instead of fixing a hundred dollar guitar um, and you know if they're charging 70 bucks per hour for a repair person to work on it well you know if they just sold it uh, for super cheap um, I would get I've gotten multiple like five dollar guitars um, now one's an acoustic that I had to re-glue the neck on <laughs> so you can understand why why uh, they were cheap but that's where I learned a lot of this stuff so, I mean, some of these people um, built guitars um, some set them up for uh, for endorsed artists um, some of them were uh, repair techs um, so I'd bug them and ask them uh, tons of questions and things like that uh, or if I found like the, a problem um, I'd, I'd ask them to uh, show me how to fix it correctly um, so it's not like I know everything I don't I don't work on guitars all the time I, I have too many of them so I probably should sell some um, but I, I do love um, getting things working as best they can so I think that's kind of where the love of this came from and also come from a long line of uh, engineers and people like that Got a tuner too. I think that's as far as I'm going to get today. I think I'm going to let it set for one more day and then do kind of like a, see if it needs to be adjusted again. So after leaving this alone for a little bit, I think there's a little bit too much relief. So the string spacing, I usually like to use the thickness of a pick. If it holds it fine, you're done. If it kind of slides through, um, not so good. So what I'm looking for when I set the relief um, with the truss rod is for there to be a slight bow but just so much that there's literally like a hair's width in there. So what I'm getting with this is like three hairs. So obviously the truss rod will need to be tightened.
uh, something that I do notice on some bad guitars um, is you have to kind of shift the neck in the pocket. Now this fits really tight in the pocket, which is nice. Um, but you want the string spacing to be even, which I was kind of like, and that looks fairly even. I mean, it tapers out a little bit more to the outside of the neck, um, but it's pretty close and it looks even ish compared to each side. So, um, I've got my first guitar this is the whole reason i got the neck straightener um how that fits into the guitar body um you have to make sure the angle is just right because some of the screw holes are loose it's a problem with the cheap 25 year old guitar versus this fits really nicely um I don't remember if this is from the 70s. Or the 60s. I'd have to ask the owner. But uh, quite, quite a bit nicer than my first guitar. But, you know, you get what you pay for. Or at least you hope to. Okay, so <clears throat> it being a trim oil, um, I need to stretch out the strings and everything to get stable tuning. Um, but I think I over tightened. So initially I under tightened, now I over tightened. So I'm gonna have to take out the neck one more time <laughs> to loosen the truss rod just a little bit because this low E string is, it buzzes too much. It does have the just a hair of of bow to it, just a hair. So what I'm checking is usually put the first fret down and then near the last fret, and then there should just in the middle just be a hair of spacing, not like a pick width, but literally like a hair. Um, and also like when you're doing this and not fretting the string, it, it should be able to hold the pick. So, not done yet. Yeah, it's just a little bit. So I probably made a three quarter turn and I probably needed to make like a quarter or maybe a half turn or a third. Probably a third would have been perfect, but yeah. <laughs> this is why I, I did realize I've got a Fender Telecaster neck and it's the same thing as this. So I think the radius is different and mine does not have the brass nut and also mine's got a Tele headstock. And it's, I think, from like the 50th anniversary era, so late 90s, 96, 97, whatever that was. Um, and it's got the same design. But luckily, it's a super stable neck, and I put light strings on that guitar, and I never have to adjust the truss rod. But hopefully, I just need to adjust the truss rod on this one more time. Which means I'm wrong, and I'll have to do it multiple times. Yeah, I just jinxed it.
Okay, I think it's there. So I look for, and there's the slightest amount of buzzing here. That might just be a bridge adjustment that needs to be done. So what I'm looking for, pressing down lightly on the first and last fret. Is there to just be a hair of space right here? So that there's a slight amount of relief, so it's not completely flat, or even worse, um, the inverse of a bow, which would be a, a hump. That's it. Uh, this little thing calls it a hump. Now, how I typically like it is to have it be able to hold a pick at most of the frets. Well. <laughs> Not at the knife. Alright, I think I'm done with this, but I'll give it back to the original owner at Baton Practice tonight, and he can see how he likes it. Um, so, you know. It seems to be set up correctly, but everybody's personal preference might be different. Uh, it's a little bit of how it sounds. That's it.